my hair is like very weightless and frizzy. It wants to be frizzy, right? Like if I touch it, it will be frizzy. I prefer curly hair, you know? Not that frizzy hair isn't incredibly wonderful because it is, right, for certain collections. But anyway, so I, this is what I prefer. And it's funny when I go to bookings and they want to do my makeup and my hair and people come towards me like with a comb and I go, get that thing. You know, like I, I get violent about people touching my hair, right? There's someone called Tom Priana who cuts my hair, who's such a genius. And he's Garen's husband. He's married to Garen. I think they're married. I'm not sure if they're married, but he's been with Garen for a million years. And he has literally been cutting my hair since like literally 1990 or something. Like that's when I met Garen and that's when Tom started cutting my hair. And in between there have been like a few years where I don't know where he was, I don't know where I was, and he wasn't cutting my hair. And then all of a sudden I was like, why don't I look as good? Because Tom has not been cutting my hair these years. And so I found him and we, he started cutting my hair again. So, and he's been cutting my hair now for the past like 10 or 15 years. And then I think like, uh-oh, you know, when Tom stops working, you know, it's gonna suck because I'm not gonna look as cute. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, my hair has changed over the past 20 years. It really has. There's definitely less of it, although there is no male pattern balding to speak of, thank God. I mean, my hairline has receded probably a little bit, but I still have a goodly amount of hair, which is good. I have a good hair gene. And I'm not sure what I would trade off. Like at the moment, of course, I think, oh yeah, you could take all my hair if you could just, I could just be thin, you know? I don't have a good, like fat gene, I'll always be like slightly fat. So it's a trade-off. You're either a little fat or you lose your hair. I don't think you can actually have hair and be thin. It's just not possible, right? I hate going to the gym. I don't like going to the gym. So there's nothing I like doing. I swim, you know, most days I'm, when I'm in New York. So that's like, I don't know, like I either swim or go to the gym. But I go to the gym like once a week and all the other days I try to go swimming. I just do the same kind of routine to keep my knees and my hips functional. That's the only reason I go to the gym. And it's very light and very easy and mostly, mostly yoga. I do a lot of yoga after I work out with these tiny little weights. And yoga is very, very important to me. I love it. I've done it my whole life. And for the past 10 years, I've had the same kind of wonderful, kooky um, guru who comes over. She's my guru. I love her so much. She's my yogi. Cheryl is my yogi. Dean sometimes comes in the room when I do yoga, which is funny. He just sits there and watches. Like there's nothing that is more lovely to do than yoga. I just think it's the most lovely thing. And it doesn't, you know, like everything else, swimming and working out and Pilates, I don't know, every, everything else is like such a drag and you have to get through it. Whereas like with yoga, the minute you start it, you just are so hap happy, you know? And it's wonderful because my mom, who is very, she's 93 and she's very brittle and she can barely move. You know, she walks with a walker and she takes her two hours to like sit down, right? She tells me that her friend Eva, who's a little older than her, right, is really spry and nimble because she always had yoga. She always did yoga. And you think about, she said she started doing it like just after World War II. And that's a funny time to take up yoga, isn't it? Like. 1949, like that's a weird time to start yoga. But she did and she's been doing it ever since and Eva is really mobile and nimble because of the yoga. That's what my mom says. I have been working so hard on my diet, except the thing about my working hard on the diet, it's not like other people working hard on it. Like I don't, I won't give stuff up. I won't give up carbs. I won't give up butter on toast. Um, I won't give up certain things. I just try to, I try really hard to eat less of it. And so it takes a really, really long time to show any result. But it's better to do it this way because at least you have like fun, a little fun in your life, you know? But last week I did this crazy thing. I was away, I was in St. Louis. And we had a break for the first time in days. I had like three hours to do nothing. And I just, I needed to eat something terrible, right? So I ate a full, like small bag of peanut M&Ms, like the whole bag. And of course I said, no, you're gonna have three of these. And I ended up eating the whole bag, right? So then I thought, okay, that's it. Those are my Weight Watchers points for the rest of the day. So I didn't eat dinner, you know? And, and it was a good comeback. It was like a save, you know? And I got the M&Ms. I needed the M&Ms, I ate the M&Ms, and then I skipped dinner.
I used to do stuff like that all the time when I was a kid. And of course, it was easier to even out, like, you know, 15 years ago, right? I mean, I used to be able to skip dinner for three nights in a row and just be like skinny, you know? No, not anymore. The funny thing is, it's like I suffer from the stupid delusion that because I am abstaining from things a little bit, I'm better. I'm a better version of me, which I guess is not so true, right? I guess it's really not that true. Or else I'm so incrementally a better version of myself that I can't even feel it. But after, you know, six months of doing this, you sh show a little tiny, tiny, tiny change and then you feel a tiny bit better about yourself, you know? It's so, it's so gradual that whatever feelings associated with it are so vague, you know? I feel vaguely better about myself. 